so what is up africana fam it's your girl young africana back at it again with another video and in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how to achieve a quick weave bob wig from start to finish so if you guys want to see how i achieve this look then keep on watching so starting off first you're going to need your hair i am using a 5x5 14 inch hd lace closure and this is in the texture straight alongside with a 10 inch and 14 inch straight bundles i only use two bundles right now on my head i have my mesh spandex dome cap i went ahead and put that on my head and i'm going to measure out where exactly i want my lace closure to start and end at i'm just using a silver metallic sharpie just to mark my territory so now that that's done i went ahead and took off the spandex dome cap and put it on my mannequin head you want to make sure you have a mannequin head that fits the circumference of your head mine is a 23.5 and right now i'm using and i know this is kind of ghetto but a fashion nova poly bag to make sure that when i'm gluing down the tracks the glue doesn't get onto the actual dome head so to make your cap fit even more realistically on your head you want to make sure that you're dragging down your nape area i'm using t-pins and i'm using those two threaded markers as like my guide to drag down the nape area and this will just ensure that the wig actually fits your head now onto sewing i'm using my c curve needle and nylon thread nylon thread is the best thread for you to use when sewing because it doesn't swell when you wash your hair and it lasts a lot longer so what i'm doing right now is i'm putting the thread through the needle and i like to stretch it out arm's length so that it's not too long but not too short and i'm going to go ahead and cut it with my shears and now what I like to do is I like to tie a knot at the end and how I tie my knot is I'm going to wrap it, wrap it around my two fingers and loop it around. And then I'm now going to pull the string through to create that knot and you only need one knot. And the only thing that we are sewing down is the lace closure. We're not sewing down the entire wig, but you are going to sew down the entire lace closure and only the lace closure. So at that time I'm not, I'm going to cut off the excess thread that I had at the ends just so that it's not sticking out. And now on to sewing on the closure. I like to bring the closure's hairline about an inch in front of the actual wig cap just so we can have like that frontal effect and the hairline is not too far back. And now to secure the closure, I'm doing my X method to pin down the closure. I'm going to start in the front side first. I'm going to start on one side in the front and go on the opposite side in the back. And then I'm going to go on the opposite side of the front and then the opposite side in the back. And as you guys can see, I kind of did it in a diagonal motion. And I like doing it this way instead of just working on one side first and then the other side second. So I can ensure that there are no bubbles and I really get to stretch out the closure as much as possible. And as you guys can see, there's no bubbles or anything while I am, you know, smoothing my hand against the closure and now to sew our closure down I am going to go ahead and thread our first thread and I'm going in the same exact spot twice just to ensure that there's a knot and everyone has their different methods of sewing but what how I like to sew is I like to make sure that the needle is in between the two threads before I pull um, and I like to sew downwards I sew with the needle going downwards and this creates like a little bridge in a sense between the threads and as you're threading you will see like these like little lines that like are bridging in between each other and i find this method of sewing a lot more secure than then just sewing upwards and um there's no bridge in a sense and hopefully you guys will kind of see the bridge i'm talking about once i go further into the sewing so like i said i like to sew close together and in this part as you guys can see i'm sewing where the spandex part is and i'm only sewing through the mesh part of the spandex and not through the actual spandex material itself and you want to make sure you do that just so that your wig can actually still stretch okay so you're only sewing through the mesh part instead of the actual spandex and you could kind of feel the difference of when you're sewing through mesh versus when you're sewing through the mesh and spandex so like i said i like to go ahead and sew close together you want to make sure that it's close together and that the needle is in between the two threads and as i pull i like to kind of pull on and hold on to the thread 
and then sew my other part and then go on and just keep on holding it as you guys can see i'm using my left hand to hold the thread um, when i'm pulling it and i hold it in place and that just ensures that like um there's no bubbles or anything and as you guys can see can you guys see like the little bridging that i'm talking about you can see the little lines vertically that i'm sewing but you also see lines horizontally that's the bridge now once i am done sewing i am going to start backtracking so what backtracking means is just i'm going to go ahead and start sewing backwards which is like i'm going to over sew on parts that i already sewn at um just so that this could give extra security and once i backtracked about like three to four times i am now going to go ahead and take my thread and wrap it around the needle three times and then pull tautly and I'm going to spread the two the two threads apart and I'm now going to pretty much just tighten the thread and this will just ensure that the thread does not unravel or come apart and now I'm just going to go ahead and use my scissors to cut it. So I did do the other side off camera and once I was done with the other side I now started continuing on to the back. So again, I like to work on one side and then work on the other side and work my way through the back as well. So it's two sides first and then the back last. And I'm just doing the same method over and over again. As you guys can see, you want to make sure that the needle is in between the two threads. And I like to pull on, on the thread just so that it is nice and tight and there are no air bubbles. Now, once I am done with that, I'm now going to go ahead and spread the two thread apart and then kind of like, you know, stretch it out. And now I'm going to go ahead and tie two knots and then cut off the excess thread that we have. And your closure should look like this. Super neat, super tight. There are no air bubbles. Um, Y'all like this is super flat and flush. So now on to marking out tracks. So what I'm doing is I'm starting above the actual um, spandex part. I like to start above it just because, again, I like my wigs to stretch. You want to make sure that it stretches. If you start on the spandex, you limit uh, your stretch. So I like to start a bit above the spandex. And I am following the natural curve of the head. So as you guys can see, I'm kind of going in like a U shape. And you want to make sure that your spaces are about an inch apart. You don't want them too close together, but you also don't want them too far apart. You want them about an inch apart. And since this is a side part, it will be a little bit different than say you would do a middle part. So I'm going to go all the way up until I reach the, um, the side part in a sense. And then I'm going to go ahead and start curving upwards. And you're going to see what I'm talking about. So just keep on following the natural curve. And as you guys can see on this side, we're starting to kind of run out of space. So I'm going to reach the edge of that closure part. And then I'm going to start shifting, uh, I guess, motion in how I am drawing the lines. All right, boom, we reached the end of that. And now, as you guys can see, we are now about to start changing how I am going to um, draw the lines just so we could fill out the rest of it. So now I am going to go ahead and um, start technically in like a little bit of the middle in a sense. And I'm going to now start drawing um, the lines from there. And again, you just want to make sure that you're following the natural curve of the head while doing this
and as y'all can see we are getting closer and closer to the top and in a sense i'm following this l shape that's that there we go that's what we're gonna call it i'm following this l shape to kind of fill in the spots that we have left because you know one side has more area of tracks than the other so i am just now following a curved l shape all the way up until we finish up at the top And after you're done, this is how it should look, y'all. Now that we have our territory marked, now it's on to the fun part, gluing down the tracks. So remember, we are using a 10 inch and a 14 inch, and here is the method to my madness. We're using the 10 inch first, right? And I'm gonna explain a little bit later on as well. I use a 10 inch and a 14 inch. So I'm using the 10 inch at the bottom, okay? And I'm going to go use my Salon Pro 30 second glue and I'm gonna apply the glue on the track and place my track onto the actual cap and then blow dry it on the hottest setting. So again, you wanna go ahead and measure out your track. You wanna cut it according to the line and then go ahead and press it down onto the cap and then blow dry it on the hottest setting. So for the 10 inch, the reason why I use a 10 inch is because usually at the bottom or the back of the hair is always the shortest, especially when you're doing a bobble and you cut it. So instead of you buying long hair to cut it, I would I'd rather buy short hair. On top of that too, when you get shorter hair, you get more hair in the bundle right so instead of you getting three bundles of like 14 inches you could just get one bundle of 10 and you're able to use a full blunt bundle and finish about more than half of the actual cap before you go on to your next bundle so not only does it save you hair it saves you money and you also get a bigger bang of your buck so thank me later also to a hate when people's you know bobs look really skimpy and like it looks frayed at the ends and it's not blunt that just doesn't give and you using a longer inch on top will just give you that full blunt effect versus you using the shortest one on top that looks crazy like we're not going for a layered looking bob if anything you should just yeah no <laughs> all right y'all so um for the 10 inch what i did was i kind of really filled in in between the lines as well um just so i'm using all of the hair and now we're on to the 14 inch and now what i'm doing is as i'm getting to the top and getting to the sides of the top i like to kind of curve it upwards just so i could get that full bang effect in a sense right uh, when it comes to side parts you kind of want to have like you know that fringe the hair coming to the front of your hair and everything so i just like to curve it a little bit upwards um just so that we can have that fullness in the front and we're just going to keep on doing that all the way until we get to the top y'all and i used all of the bundles there was not a single hair left behind okay and now on to finishing off the top we are going to now place the track right next to the closure we're not going to place it on top of it but literally right next to each other almost as if like they're kind of sandwiching or like they're like you know little spooning and big spooning you want to make sure that's right next to each other and not on top and again just use your blow dryer on the hottest setting on the track just so that the glue could better adhere to the actual cap and this is how it should look. 
I love doing this method because it's super fast. I did this within under an hour and it's just super flat. Like I just love a flat wig, okay? And it's also very beginner friendly. So this is how it looks. And now I'm going to go ahead and take off the wig. As I can see, the wig came off really, really nicely without any struggle off that poly bag. So don't shoot the messenger, okay? But now I'm going to flip my wig inside out and I'm going to cut off that excess cap underneath the lace because you don't want cap right underneath the lace. So what I'm doing is you want to make sure that you're being very, very mindful that the thread is still there. So you want to cut right like next to the thread. If you could leave a little bit of cap on there, you can. Um, but yes, just cut right next to the thread. You don't want to cut on the thread because then your closure is going to come off. Unfortunately, I couldn't really show like a good view of me doing that. Um, but yes, you just want to make sure that you're cutting right next to the thread without cutting the thread off. And you can see the, like the thread lines underneath it and as i can see boom we're just going to take that off and now your wig is pretty much complete now on to the styling i'm going to go ahead and put this wig on my head as i can see it looks really flat and nice and now i'm going to now part to my side part for me i am a c curved girly okay i love me a c curved side part so i am parting my hair in a c curved motion and i'm using my hot comb on the hottest setting and i'm just pressing out my hairline and also pressing out the part as well just so that there's no flyaways and our wig don't look humpty and bumpty okay it's just it don't give okay and now onto the back this is the most important part you want to make sure that you cut the c part as you guys can see in the back as well and i'm using my care care wax stick just to really sleek down that hair in the back and this will just help cover up the tracks I'm now going to go ahead and flat iron my hair and I'm using my con hair infinity pro flat iron this one you can get from Ulta and I'm just using the trace method with my comb and the flat iron and as you can see like the wig is starting to come together it's coming to form and shape all right but now on to the hairy the hairy part the hairy and messy part I'm going to go ahead and use my um, razor comb. You can get this from the beauty supply store and I'm using the one with the shorter guard. Uh, I'm using the side with the shorter guard and I'm going to cut my bob on my head. And I'm doing this just to kind of, um, you know, fray out the ends so that the ends aren't super choppy once I'm cutting it. So this would really just give you like body and you know bounce i don't know how to explain it but it just really just you know give you form and i am cutting this kind of like in an asymmetrical way a little bit well a lot of bit actually <laughs> but i am going to be cutting this asymmetrical meaning that the front is going to be longer than the actual back so i'm just kind of cutting this just to get like my shape and you know get like a guideline of where i'm actually going to cut at And so far it's looking good. Y'all can kind of see like the shape that I'm trying to go for. And like the hair is super flowy and nice and the ends are not that choppy. So I did went ahead and take off the wig and put it on my mannequin head just to kind of further more with the cut. And um, you just want to just keep on doing that. I'm going a little bit more higher with the layers in the back because like I did say, I did want the back to be shorter. And now I'm going in with my clippers. This is my whale clippers. And I'm just going to go ahead and start cutting the hair. You want to make sure that you kind of tilt the mannequin head downward just so you can get that full stretch of the hair and see underneath the hair as well too. So I did start off with clippers, but then I ended up using my shears just to kind of finish off the cut. And as you're doing this, you just want to make sure that you're combing the hair throughout it just so that you know that you're cutting every strand on that bob.
Now, once I'm done with that, I am going to go ahead and cut my hair into sections, starting off in the back, and I am going to start bumping the hair. I'm not doing a super bump, like I'm not doing how our mamas used to do our bumps and do us dirty, um, but I'm doing a slight bump in the back just to kind of give our hair more volume and like the bob can come together and the ends don't look crazy, okay? Um, so yeah, just go in sections and just kind of slightly bump the ends. And as I'm getting more closer to the top and the back, I'm going to slightly start um, bumping the hair in like a different direction a little bit. So y'all can see that, like y'all see that? Ugh, like it just gives y'all, it just gives. It gives sophisticated bob. This is the sophisticated bob. This is not your regular regular bob, but you can definitely wear it for a regular regular day, but still slay, okay? Oh, look at that bars. Y'all see that horn? Eminem got nothing on me. Jay-Z got nothing on me, okay? <laughs> um, but yeah, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and just keep on bumping it up. And in the front, I kind of wanted like this weird uh, Pixar mom bob uh, bump in the front. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain that bump in the front, but it's like a slight curve. It's like a little bit different from everywhere else. But this is how the bob looks like at the end. It is super nice and full and the pair has body yaddy okay and this is how the bob looks like on me we are we are going to cut off the lace and i did cut in the middle with my shears and then using my eyebrow razor just to cut off the lace in a jagged motion now when it comes to the edges of the closure as you guys can see like there's like a thick part of like um the perforated parts of the closure you want to make sure that you really cut into it just so that it's not visible on the sides and, you know, it's not me if I don't do baby hair. So I had to do a little baby hair action, just really small. I went ahead and just carved out just one baby hair um, at the temple area of, like, you know, my hairline. And I'm using my T-Vix iron in the 3 8 inch. And I'm going to curl that baby hair upwards just to kind of form it into shape. And then I'm using my Erica J um, fluff stuff foam. And I'm using my baby hair comb just to carve out my baby hairs. And these are the final results. I do have my makeup video. I'm going to drop it tomorrow. So stay tuned. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel. And click that bell to get notified when I drop. And I'll see you guys in the next one.